Hello and good afternoon everyone. My name is Chip Highmiller and I am one of the founders of the firm Beacon Financial Strategies in Raleigh, North Carolina. Today is Friday, March 20th, 2020. First of all, I would like to welcome everyone who is attending this webinar today. Our entire team is super excited you could make it and make us a part of your social distancing plan. Uh, the purpose of this presentation is to provide you with some insight and perhaps a little bit of a historical perspective on what's going on in the financial markets right now. Just to give you an idea of the format of this webinar, I will be discussing the financial markets in the first portion, and then Aaron Campbell will be going through a number of financial planning strategies and ideas that we expect to explore with our clients throughout this year. We will have time at the end for your questions. First of all, I would like to start out with a little bit of housekeeping. This webinar is really focused towards uh, Beacon clients, so it's kind of a service to our clients. I know that there might be some people who are joining in later who um, are just interested in hearing kind of our perspective or pers perspective from an outsider, and we're happy to do that, but you know, this is something that our clients are going to hear. We're repeating things that we've discussed in meetings and that sort of thing. And so it's really going to be most beneficial to clients. There is a QA and a message box. If you kind of poke around on the, the system, you'll, you'll kind of see a Q&A box and I'm totally happy to answer any questions that, that might arise that clients might have. If uh, there's anything, just type that out and we'll get to those the best we can. I think that we're going to have a, um, maybe a few questions uh, already that, that are kind of common that, that people have answered or people have asked us that we've answered. Keep in mind that the host here is myself, Chip High Miller. Aaron Campbell's gonna be joining us in a second. And um, she's, uh, we're kind of tag teaming this little presentation and uh, hopefully we want to hit a few market related items, but also touch on some planning things as well. And um, so with that being said, let's kind of get started. Uh, first of all, this week was a brutal week in the market. I know that many of you are, um, have been following things closely and we just uh, understand completely how you feel. Um, it's, it's been hard to watch, to be honest with you. Um, but I'll say that eventually markets are going to recover and um, make new highs. So, you know, eventually uh, things will come back around um, and, and we'll eventually progress forward as always. Also, your portfolio is not the market. I know we've reinforced this uh, many times. We have uh, written this in our newsletters. We, we discuss this when we're having our meetings and talking about your portfolio and the risk tolerance that you have and your risk profile and really our investment strategy, uh, but your portfolio is not the Dow. That's what the prognosticators are talking about, the media, all of the red, you see that. Your portfolio has a mixture of stocks and bonds, large cap stocks, small cap stocks. Uh, we're just really spread out and diversified. Uh, your portfolio was specifically developed uh, and constructed with your circumstances in mind. So we're already thinking about, okay, uh, what's your cash flow needs? Uh, how long, you know, how much are you taking out each month, both now and potentially in the future? So for some people, they're in this accumulation mode and maybe they're, they're saving and, you know, cash flow uh, concerns are kind of on the distant horizon. But for many of our clients, honestly, we're taking periodic distributions, but we're accounting for that in the way your portfolio is actually structured. Risk profile. We also have spent a lot of time evaluating your risk profile now. In some ways, that's kind of thrown out the door with what's going, going on. You don't really expect decline of this magnitude that we've seen over the past, uh, you know, really a couple of weeks uh, to happen very often, although it, it has happened a couple of times here in the last even 20 years. So we are aware of, of that. But your portfolio is developed with your risk capacity, your risk required, and really your whole risk profile in mind. So the question that we've been getting a lot this week is, you know, what is, how long is it going to last? What is typical for downturns? How long does it last? How long is the pain going to last? And so, you know, while of course we don't know the answer to that, I wish that I did. Uh, but I'll say that, you know, if we look over the course of time, uh, slide really shows how long certain uh, 
downturns and recoveries have lasted. So you can kind of see here the De Great Depression lasted for about 34 months from uh, you know peak to trough uh, with about an 83% loss. So um, that was you know the big one. And um, uh, of course, I don't expect something like that to happen nowadays. Our our financial system is is much better and on a stronger footing uh, than it was at that point in time. There are many guard guardrails that are now in place that weren't uh, at that point in time. But if you can kind of scroll down and uh, just with your eyes, you can kind of see, you know, how long the downturns have on average last, the percentage loss of those downturns. And then on the right hand side, you'll see the recovery. How long does it take to get back to the top of where the market was before the decline? So, you know, I want to point your attention out to uh, really several of the um, periods of time that we've lived through. You know, back in the uh, early 2000s, many of you re recall the tech bubble that, that popped. The S&P 500 was down about 45% at that point. At, at the lowest point. It lasted about 25 months, so two years of declines. That's how long that lasted. Uh, and it was brutal. Uh, it's kind of rough point in time as well. The recovery lasted for about 49 months, so a little bit more than four years uh, is how long it took to get back to, uh, to even. The Great Recession, so that's uh, very fresh in a lot of people's mind. I, I can tell you I'm having a little bit of flashbacks to that period of time as I'm living through uh, the last couple of weeks, but you know, from uh, the Great Recession, the market, the S&P 500 was down almost 51 percent. So that is a you know extraordinary decline. A lot of there's a lot of pain with that, um, you know. But that lasted about 16 months, and the, the recovery lasted about 37 months. Most recently, the, the October to December of 2018. I mean, that most people don't even realize that that was even a decline. It was so short lived, but it only lasted about three months. Markets declined about 14 or 15 percent uh, in total there, and uh, then the recovery was in four months. So that was a, a very quick one. Uh, I think that would be, um, you know, just something to mention. Most people didn't even realize that that had happened. So what? How does it look like going forward? So at the point when we eventually do figure out where uh, the low point is, what's it look like going forward? How will returns be? Um, and you can kind of see here, you know, after a one year period, the look ahead period is on average about 11%. Now, you know, there are lots of different market corrections here. Just, this is just a declines of 10% or more, you know, which all the ones we've talked about in the prior slide were a part of that. But there are many times, you know, on average, probably once a year, the market declines by 10% or once every other year, something like that. So, you know, if you, if you look and think about the number of measurements and, and data points that that are that that exists there you know 11 percent is the average going forward if you look ahead the three-year period about 10 percent five-year periods about and a little under 10 percent as well so you know eventually markets will recover and we'll you know see some uh, advance and better market conditions i think this slide is uh, interesting because many of you uh, have portfolios that are what we would consider a balanced portfolio. So, you know, and I would call that a 60% stock portfolio and 40% bonds. And so this gives you an idea of how that type of portfolio uh, works uh, over various different financial crises. So you can see here in the first column on the left, this is the 1987 stock market crash, which and I remember that well, believe it or not, I was interested in this uh, and investing at that point in time. And so, you know, I made it a note to see how and, and, and read and watch uh, Wall Street Week with Louis Rukeyser and those things. And so I definitely uh, remember this period. But you can see like, you know, the first column is a uh, one month after uh, the crisis, you know, on average, it's still the even a balanced portfolio is down, but the longer you extend that time, and the light blue column here is five years. So you can kind of see the cumulative return of a balanced portfolio after all of these different um, historic events. And many of you I know remember these things, you know, and, and have some of these scarred in your mind. So you can kind of see the, the uh, most recent Great Recession that we've had here. Uh, 
if you'd held on with a 60-40 type of portfolio, you had uh, after about five years, you had return, seen returns somewhere in the neighborhood of 80%. And of course, every one situation is different. This is a, a hypothetical data point that's Morningstar kind of created, but uh, it gives you a good idea of kind of how eventually markets recover. It may not be in one month, it may not be in six months, but generally if you have a time horizon that's adequate, uh, five year, 10 year, you see this recovery. So what's the bottom line here? Basically, we are uh, unsure of exactly where we are in the market downturn process. I know that you know today the market was down a little bit and um, that could continue some in the future. I don't know exactly where we are there, but uh, over the course um, uh, the next few months and years, we'll start to see uh, a recovery. I will say that markets, the financial markets are super efficient uh, and forward looking. So this is important. So you're not going to see, um, the data is not going to come out to say, hey, the, we're recovered and then the market's gonna follow suit. It's always, you know, the data is still bad uh, and the markets have already looked forward to a recovery. So uh, keep that in mind. You're never going to hear, you know, favorable news that comes out that validates the fact that the market is going to go up uh, in the short term. So keep that in mind. Uh, also, it's important for us to think about, you know, we're going to focus on those things that we can control. We can't control the markets and what's going on there, but we do have control over some things, you know, uh, how diversified a portfolio is, how it's allocated that's to be consistent with the risk profile and cash flow needs, you know, um, and we're also going to take advantage of financial planning opportunities that, that can create over time some really enormous benefit. And so with that being said, I want uh, Aaron to kind of chime in here and um, provide some perspective on, um, you know, some financial planning opportunities that at least we as a firm and our whole team really are already talking about and thinking about, okay, going forward this year, what um, are we gonna do? How are we going to uh, approach this um, uh, situation? So with that, I'm gonna let Aaron chime in here. All right, Aaron, you're back. Okay, hopefully everybody can hear me. Thanks so much for joining us. As you can see, Chip and I are not in the same place. Um, we have not been all together um, all week. Um, we're trying to kind of keep our social distance. So I'm really overwhelmed by all of you guys tuning in on a Friday night. So we appreciate that. Um, but as Chip alluded to, we've got some financial planning opportunities that we want to make sure that you guys are aware of. And some of, some of them we've talked with you before about, but we wanted to make sure that that everyone on the call kind of knows what we're thinking. Um, and the first one is the Roth conversions. Um, so now's the time to really think about whether or not it's a good time to do a Roth conversion. And the reason is, is because a lot of the accounts are down right now based on the fact that the market's down. And so when the market's down and the, and the accounts are down, it's a good time to take a chunk of money out of your IRA, pay the taxes on it and move it into your Roth IRA. And the thing about that that's great is that if we're moving, say, $50,000 from an IRA to a Roth, we pay, 50, pay taxes on the $50,000. The hope is that in the future, based on kind of the, the shots that, that the screen that Chip just showed us, that it'll go up and then maybe it'll be at sixty or 70000 a couple of years from now. And we only pay taxes on the $50,000. So it's kind of like um, paying taxes at a time when it really makes sense. And so um, the beauty of the, IRA, the Roth IRA, as most of you know, is that um, you're never going to pay taxes on that amount again. We're going to take money out in the future and not pay taxes on it. So now's the time. And so that's something that we're definitely going through and thinking about for all of our clients. And so I just want, if, if we haven't talked to you about it and you're kind of curious, then um, feel free to reach out. Um, on the next slide, we kind of talked again about why we really like Roth IRAs. Um, <clears throat> and so if you kind of, and Chip, you might want to move to the next slide there. Um, I'm, it's not moving on my screen, so... The, uh, the reasons why we like the Roth IRAs is because we don't have to pay taxes, which I just said, and everybody knows me, knows that I, I don't enjoy paying taxes. Um, you can take your contributions out at any time. So what that means is, okay, we put some money in and if we need the money back out, we can take it back out. We don't have to wait to age 72. We don't have to wait to age 59. Um, we can take out our original contributions at any time. Now, any earnings in the account, we would have to wait um, until 59 but you, don't, you can take it out. Um, 
you're never going to have to take a required minimum distribution. So with IRAs and 401k plans, um, you have to take a distribution once you're age 72 now. With Roth IRAs, we definitely don't ever have to take a required minimum distribution. And the best part is the beneficiaries, if someone inherits a, that Roth IRA account, then they don't have to pay taxes on the distribution. They have to take the money out, but they don't have to pay taxes on it. So it's really talking about just not just planning for you, but planning for your future and your heirs as well. Um, so that's it about the Roth IRAs. The next part that we wanted to kind of talk about was the mortgage refinance. So interest rates are low. They're likely going to get much lower. Uh, we've seen um, definitely that the interest rates have gone down, but maybe they haven't hit the mortgage markets yet. Um, and so in a few months, we might be coming to you and saying, hey, it looks like the mortgage rates have adjusted down. Maybe it's time to look into something there. Um, we might be looking at a lower fixed rate, maybe changing from a 30 year to a 15 year because maybe it makes sense from a cash flow perspective. Uh, we might be looking to lock in a, a fixed rate versus an adjustable rate if that's what you currently have. And I just want everybody to know that that's something we're going to be looking at in the coming months. But I do want to make sure that if you're thinking about it, that you reach out to us because we want to make sure we analyze this for you to see if it makes sense. Um, and we don't want to leave you hanging trying to do that stuff yourself. So, um, and on the next slide, we're talking a little bit about tax loss harvesting. So for this, we're not talking about IRAs. We're not talking about Roth IRAs. We're really talking about those personal brokerage accounts. So um, we might sell the assets uh, in your account at a loss. And the whole point there is we're trying to offset any gains. So we did place trades earlier this year. Some things might have been in a gain. And so if we're now looking to say, OK, well, let's sell some things at a loss to offset those gains. Um, if and the hope is that we can offset the gains in the current year. But if, if there's more than, than that, we can take a $3,000 loss on your income tax return um, in 2020. And that will offset. So a $3,000 loss that goes to the front of your tax return will, will actually reduce your total income for this year. Um, and if it's more than $3,000, then it carries forward indefinitely. Um, and the beauty there is it can offset gains kind of in future years. It could be 2021 or 2022. Um, and they don't ever run out. So you keep your capital loss carry forward as long as, as you live. So that's kind of a nice little benefit there if, if we do experience some tax loss harvesting in your account. Um, and then finally, we're kind of looking to rebalance and upgrade your portfolio. So there may be some, some equities that you have in your account. Maybe you've had them a long time. Maybe there's a better fund now than what originally was there. Maybe it's got, we can find some um, funds that are actually lower cost, um, lower expense ratios or something. So we might be looking to kind of sell those things um, right now while they're down so that the gain is not quite so much. Um, but the best part about this is we're buying things while they're on sale. So we're looking at, at buying things, you know, for pricing from a couple of years ago. So it, it's a great opportunity to kind of go in and buy some things and, and change around the portfolio if we were planning on doing it anyway, or if we just wanted to kind of uh, make a, a fun switch there. So that's the benefit of, of that. And we're kind of looking for all those opportunities. So those are just a few things that, that our team has kind of been looking at. Um, and I'll kind of turn it back over to Chip to kind of, See if there are any questions out there. Okay, let's see. So I'm looking at questions here. Um, all right, so uh, here, here's a good one. I, I, I'm planning on hitting on all of these, but you know, would it make sense to sell or trim stocks now and buy them back in two months when the coast is clear? And so that is, uh, it's, that seems like an easy thing to do, right? You just pull the Band-Aid off, wait until the coast is clear, and then, and then uh, buy back into the market and all's well that ends well. Well, keep in mind the, how it really works. So, you know, let's say that the market is at, at this level right here, and um, it kind of bounces around uh, at this level for a couple of months until, you know, there's some clarity on the extent of uh, the coronavirus and, and we feel like we have it under control and then maybe the market bumps up a little bit. Uh, and, you know, so you, you decide, okay, let's buy back in now. Well, this line is never a straight, it's never a straight line. So there's a chance where you, that you sold here, you buy here, and then it declines not just to where you, the starting point, but below that. 
So now you've absorbed, you, you've taken the first loss and then you've bought back in and you've taken that loss again. And so that is a, something that people are, don't really think about, but you know, I've been doing it long enough to know that it absolutely can happen. And you know, we don't know where that point is of stability. And I know thinking back to the great recession, you know, there were ton, you know, there were, no one was saying in 2011, even that we were out of the woods at that point in time, it was still negativity. Uh, there were still major financial institutions that were under duress and there were all these problems that were there. And so that's, uh, that's kind of our take on that. Um, a question about the chart and I want to go back. So bear with me here. I kind of want to go back to this. So, um, so someone asked about the 80, the 83% loss. So it, the question is, does the 83% mean you never recovered what you lost? Well, no, that does, that's not what it means. What it means is that it takes 151 months. It, in the Great Depression, it took 151 months to recover the 83%. So about 12 years. So if you had, you know, um, bought in at the very top of the market uh, in 1929 and rode it all the way down, you know, in about 12 years, it um, had recovered. A um, couple of other ones. Uh, in light of health risks to the Beacon team, what is the continuity plan if anyone gets sick and can't work, particularly for Aaron and Chip? So um, this is a good question, and it's one that we are we do think about. I mean, what would happen to our company if something were to happen to me or something were to happen to Aaron? Uh, we uh, first of all, we're both feel really healthy, and we're in our mid forties, and we have a long life to live. So um, my, I've got an eight year old son, so I don't plan on anything happening to me. And, and certainly not Aaron, but we do have a contingency plan in the event that that, that something does happen. Um, and which, you know, first of all, in, for any clients that have, um, you know, their accounts are still their accounts. Like if you have an account at Charles Schwab or TD Ameritrade, your account is still your account. And, you know, you can identify another advisor that you um, would like to work with. But I can tell you on our end, we're working awful hard as a team to get everyone involved. So, you know, some of you have noticed that we're, everyone is really involved in the meetings. We're building a team. So we talk about every client situation uh, every quarter. And we are, um, you know, making great strides to make sure that everyone is on the same page. Everyone can step in. I'll tell you that uh, two months ago, Aaron had pneumonia and was out for two weeks. So, you know, very few people probably even recognize anything there, but she was, she had pneumonia. She was kind of working from home a little bit, but, you know, she was kind of out of commission. Uh, but Stephanie could handle, uh, you know, 95% of the things that, that Aaron was handling. And so, you know, uh, keep that in mind too. I think that's a, that's a good point. Uh, let me see here. What else do we have? Uh, if you're planning on retiring in the next two years, what is the best thing to do? The best thing to do right now is to maintain your position. So, you know, to me, I think that, you know, if, if we're looking in the, sh this is what we would call pre-retiree. So you definitely need to start thinking about, okay, where are the cash flows? Where's the money that's going to be funding your retirement? Uh, going to come from. And so that's, that's kind of a logistics, but you know, you, you definitely don't want to reallocate your portfolio now. I think that would be um, a bad decision to me. You can kind of, um, uh, you can kind of uh, stay the course for now. Yeah. Yes, we will. A uh, question about rebalancing. Um, is that something we'll be doing for all of us automatically or we didn't, do we need to make an appointment to discuss? No, we are, Nick and I are working, um, you know, on a daily basis on this. So we're looking at every uh, client account that we have. Now we have technology solutions that help us do that in an efficient and expedited way, but we are definitely uh, on that. And that's, there's nothing that you need to do there. Uh, if there's, you know, for some people we may say, okay, well, this is kind of a, you know, there's going to be a lot of trades. They might, get upset, we might give you a call or send you an email just kind of describing that. But 
uh, for sure uh, that is something that we're doing behind the scenes. Uh, a federal tax return is postponed until J July, that's right. Uh, what about the state filing? I, um, I think that uh, I, maybe I'll allow Aaron, we talked about that today, I forgot the status. I think, uh, Aaron, did you, do you know about that one? You're, you're on mute. All right, I'll go to the next one while you're working out the audio. Can an inherited IRA be converted to a Roth? Uh, no, an inherited IRA cannot be converted to a Roth. Uh, if we did a Roth conversion a month ago, should we be looking to do it again? To me, we think about Roth conversions on a client by client basis and we want to know. So if you do a Roth conversion, I want you to, um, we want to look at the exact tax impact because you know, I, I want to be strategic about that. I, I want you, I don't want to throw you into another bracket. I don't want you to uh, be impacted by things like increasing Medicare premiums. Um, so I want to be very careful with Roth conversions. That's a good point. You know, don't, don't just do a Roth conversion. Let's uh, be strategic about that. Um, should we all go to cash and go back in a year? I saw that one. We answered that. Yes, the Roth conversions are something we're thinking about for every single client that we have. And I mean, we, maybe we need to do a better job of communicating this, but I think as a team, we're definitely looking at this every, every year uh, from October to basically the end of uh, November, we're looking at tax plans for people. And, and part of that is thinking through strategically, what are some things that this client can do or that they should do that will be appropriate to either A, minimize taxes this year or minimize taxes in the future. Taxes is a big thing that we help um, everyone um, manage for sure. Uh, can my 401k post-retirement be converted into a Roth? Uh, yes, it can, but again, I would wanna be strategic about that. Um, Will you be contacting us directly on refinancing? Uh, yes, that's something, refinancing is gonna be a decision that my, my thought is that in maybe six months from now, mortgage rates will be at a different level. They have, I have not seen a huge adjustment at this point. Uh, I think that at some point they will uh, adjust and go, go further down than where they are now. Okay. Okay. All right. That's it. So I think that is uh, all that we have. Um, a couple of, a couple of things that I want to uh, just go back through and just let you know, you know, take care of yourself. Um, it's uh, this financial stuff is, is super important, but your, your uh, physical health, your mental health, all that stuff is important. Know yourself, know which sources of information you need to avoid because those are the things that, you know, this information is being delivered by people who do not know you, don't care about you, they just want clicks, and they want your attention for a period of time. They don't know your situation, and so, you know, I, I want you to try and avoid those um, sources of information. Uh, try not to worry. It's hard. Uh, we are in a, um, uh, a very unique period of time, and, but it's one that we're going to get through. And we're going to thrive in the end. It's going to be, um, it's going to be okay. Uh, we're just uh, have to go through this this patch here. And also, you know, again, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. I hope this has been helpful. Um, but we are here working um, hard now. I'll tell you that we're all working from home. Uh, but we, every day we have a, um, a staff meeting where we're all looking at each other. It's kind of fun, and uh, we're. Uh, keeping things going. We're around. Uh, give us a call if, if I, you happen to ans ask a question that I didn't get to, uh, but uh, hopefully this has been beneficial. And um, nevertheless, feel free to reach out. 919-803-3801, um, uh, or you can send us an email. I think everyone uh, knows my email. So, all right, that's all for today. Hope you guys have a fantastic weekend and, um, you know, enjoy yourself and your family. Thank you.